You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? Who art Ed? Who art Ed? Mr. Wood, art Ed, me. Yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted Weekly Art History for All Ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Max Beckman. Now, just a little bit of warning because this is an all ages show. While I don't get into anything too graphic, Max Beckman was a German artist in the early 20th century. So when you think about Germany, early 20th century, Just a little fair warning, this one will get a little bit dark. Max Beckman was a German painter born February 12th, 1884. While he's often associated with the Expressionist movement, he actually rejected that label. He was a part of the New Objectivity Movement, which shared some similarities with Expressionists, but while the Expressionists sought to portray their inner self for the world to see, New objectivity was outward looking, holding a mirror up to the world, expressing the state of society as the artist saw it. Of course, all of that would come a little later. For now, let's start with his biography. As a child, Beckman showed talent for art and he was supported developing his skills. His parents encouraged him, and at the age of 19, his portfolio was strong enough to earn him admittance to the Grand Ducal School of Fine Art in Weimar. The academy was rather rigid in the late 19th century. Beckman wasn't totally into the whole traditional historical painting style. He gravitated toward work by what were then avant-garde artists like Vincent van Gogh and Edvard Munch. But he was still a great student. He was well-read and a thoughtful artist. He was well-versed in literature and philosophy. He also read a lot of religious texts. He was into mysticism and theosophy. He tried to find and draw out spiritual dimensions that may not be immediately apparent in his subjects. When World War I hit, Beckman volunteered to serve in the medical corps. Anyone who knows the brutality of war, and that war in particular, can probably imagine that Beckman saw things that cannot be unseen. He was traumatized by seeing the pain and suffering up close, and his work reflected that. After the war, he painted figures that looked contorted and anguished. As I said, he's often lumped in with the Expressionists because that movement was happening at the time. New objectivity was an offshoot of expressionism, and his work does have that gut-level, visceral response, but he would say that he wasn't trying to express what he felt, rather what he witnessed others experiencing. My favorite painting of his is a haunting piece about the horrors of war and how it rips apart the home. It's an unflinching look at family trauma. Now, since this is an all-ages show, I will steer clear of some of the darkest symbolism present, but I think it's worth describing a bit. First off, there are the angles. With the painting The Night, the piece seems almost cubist from a distance as the architecture seems fragmented. The planes are defined but feel impossible. The angles and strong movement are what drew me to this piece when I was about 20 years old studying painting. Probably one of the best paintings I ever made was my copy of Max Beckman's The Night. Beckman was incredible at activating every inch of the canvas in his compositions. Of course, the angles are about more than simply creating a pathway for the eye to follow around the painting. The activity is overwhelming, almost disorienting. The space seems fractured, and that's intended to replicate the experience of trauma. When people think about traumatic events, it's not a clear story, but rather comes back to them in bits and pieces. Fragmented images of moments and experiences that take time to make sense of. In this painting, we see a figure representing a man taken from the home to serve in the war. We know he's a soldier because of the black sole of his foot. 
It's a reference to trench foot, which commonly affected soldiers spending too much time down in the trenches, their boots soaked constantly, causing their feet to blacken as their flesh rotted. The central figure in the vest smoking the pipe is meant to represent a doctor. He's seemingly giving our soldier a checkup, but in this moment appears to be literally twisting the man's arm, suggesting the doctor will clear him to return to service, forcing him back into the trenches. There's a conical shape of a sound horn signifying the din of war, the overwhelming and unrelenting sounds of battle and human misery. Now, I could go on with all of the other symbolism in there, but really, I think you get the point. It was bleak, and everything else in there is just getting darker. Like a lot of people, Beckman had initially been in favor of the Great War, as it was called at the time. There were many who thought the war would be just a few weeks and everyone would be back home for the holidays. Of course, reality never seems to play out as nicely as one's fantasies. And the reality of war is uglier than most of us could ever imagine. Beckman was disillusioned by his experience in the medical unit. When the war finally ended, Beckman found himself in the Weimar Republic, as Germany was known back between the wars. It was a nation on the brink, as it faced hyperinflation, political instability, and extremist factions attempting to take power through violence. In 1918, Beckman painted the night, showing domestic life torn apart, sinking into the dark abyss. Generally, the human memory has a way of editing out the worst bits. As time passes, memories fade, and people can mistakenly think that war was not so bad. Beckman painted the grim reality as he saw it, so that people would not become complacent so they wouldn't repeat the mistake of looking at war as an adventure. Of course, we all know the Great War came to be known as World War I because within two decades, another man-made global trauma would unfold. During the 1920s, though, as Germany tried to regain its footing, Beckman found quite a bit of success. His paintings were well-received for a while. The Night is considered a masterpiece from... 1918, 1919. In 1925, he went to teach at the Schadel School Academy of Fine Art in Frankfurt. In 1927, he won multiple awards. He was given the Honorary Empire Prize for German Art and the Gold Medal of the City of Dusseldorf. The National Gallery of Art in Berlin began acquiring his paintings. And in the early 1930s, he had a string of successful exhibitions, But of course, all of that would change as Hitler came to power. In 1933, the Nazis removed Beckman from his teaching position. And then, in 1937, Hitler gave a speech over the radio talking about what he considered to be, quote, degenerate art. Having glimpsed humanity at its worst during the First World War, Beckman wanted no part of what was about to unfold. He packed up what he could and left Germany the very next day. He actually never went back to Germany. He spent years in the Netherlands while awaiting his visa to come to the U.S., where he lived out the rest of his life in relative peace. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and of course on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.